Hi students, I am very sure all of you have played as young children. Let's understand the scientific implications of play. The unique character of a child is to play. Play is an outlet of their enthusiasm of life to live. Play is an absolute necessity of life. The need for child's play is supported by decades of research. A deprivation of play will have consequences on their growth and development. The school and parents prevent children from playing in open spaces, fields and other special spaces. Traditional ball games like Lagori are games almost forgotten. Children are enrolled into clubs at younger age. This is further compounded when children sit still in front of screens like television, video games and computer absorbing their imagination and reducing their interest in play. Learning outcomes of this module is to enable you to understand play scientifically with the help of theories of play and to understand the advantages of play. Play is refreshing. Play is a common ingredient of healthy childhood. The child's love for learning is linked with zest for play. Children approach life with playful spirit in whatever they do, be it physical skills, social relation or cognitive content. For children, there seems to be life is full of work as they are playing all the time. Let's look at little Ramesh, one year old, on a holiday at his grandparents' house, was overjoyed to see a flight of steps. This gave him a vent to his desire to climb stairs repeatedly up and down till he had mastered it. He was focused, was happy, did not wish to be taken away from the spot. This is because he was mastering a new skill important for later development. He did it himself explains that it was self-initiated play. Children are born with an urge to grow and learn. Develop their capacities while they play is the simplest medium or channel through which they operate. Let's look at the differences between play and game. When we observe a six month old baby being very happy by squeezing a toy amused by the sound it makes and a four year old putting all the pieces of paper in a row and pretending as if he was laying plates at a buffet for food to be served. All these are instances of play. They are self-initiated play. It is very natural. This is very serious trade for a child and anybody disturbing them would mean putting an end to natural flow of energy as the child is totally involved in it. As children grow up, play becomes more organized like playing in two groups, a set of rules to be observed, following the rules through the play and at the end there is a winner or a loser. This is the basic difference between play and game. In a game, the end is more important. In play, the process is more important. Play is learning while game is testing one's ability, comparing oneself to others and others rating one's ability. The joy derived from playing is different each time, yet they are rewarding. Play and its relation on various domains of development. The main objective of early childhood education is to encourage the various domains of development. Play is an important tool to achieve this. Play helps in building a healthy child. Our main aim in early childhood education is to build a healthy child or a holistic development that means paying importance to all round development. A play activity does not at any time focus on any one domain but two or more domains overlap. A clear line cannot be drawn to demarcate play that it stimulates a specific domain. This does not matter to an early childhood educator as the objective of early childhood education is more important. Let's understand sand play. The child is actively involved, that is his attention is being used. He is using his hands, that is fine motor development, creating different molds, that is concept development, shape and cognitive domain, sharing material in the sand pit, 
his socio emotional domain is being interacted with thus one can very confidently proclaim that play integrates all domains of development a preschool educator or a parent need to understand child's needs abilities and interest at every age and stage of development by observing their behavior this will enable adults handling children to provide a suitable experience to master a particular domain ajit 1 and 1/2 year old was enjoying by bouncing on a sofa young mother rakshita was very embarrassed as she considered this as bad manners based on the observation the elderly member in the family came up with a creative idea he designed a toy that encouraged him to bounce till he was satisfied the role of adults is to understand what the child is trying to express and how they could be met all cultures have given importance to play as sites of excavation are a proof to this some social scientists have given theoretical interpretation to play based on their observations theories have been put forward they could be classified as early classical theories and current theories the classical theories are surplus energy theory relaxation theory free exercise theory recapitulation theory growth theory ego expanding theories current theories are infantile dynamics cathartic theory psychoanalytic theory and cognitive theory let us go through each of these theories surplus energy theory a child is a source of surplus energy this surplus energy needs to be let out play is a channel to let out this energy the young children do not have burden of adult world the basic duty of the child is self preservation through play the surplus energy finds a release through play play is a means to spend this energy though energy is also required for maintenance of self let's understand and look at adwi a child of 2 years is fascinated by opening and closing of a bottle cap and she continues to do this in several such objects that can be fitted one into the other like a pen cap lipstick variety of bottle caps she continues to do it till she has mastered the skill of closing and opening act either by screwing or by fitting in an observational record of her mother she had recorded this act about 500 times this play activity is fascinating at a particular age at the same time spending all the energy to open and close and until she has mastered the task the energy will transcend into different play activities appropriate to a particular age this skill is very essential to survive in the civilized world the relaxation theory proposes that the primary aim of involving oneself in play again and again is due to the joy that one derives by getting involved in the play activity in other words those who get involved in play get recreated so play gives one recreation in the process the fatigue that is accumulated in an individual is released in the process one is ready to take up yet another task that is not familiar to him or her a cognitive activity which is deep rooted for the race which may be psychoanalytically acquired behavior or psychogenetic the function that are common to race like all developmental milestones ontogenic functions that is specific to an individual and requiring training like classical dance or any other sport these play skills live with one all life and even today we can see many elderly who still continue to do these mainly for relaxing the joy that one derives from play this also helps in keeping one mentally and physically healthy pre exercise theory in this it says play gives a child an opportunity to exercise and learn those behaviors that are required for one's survival let's take the game of i spice all children run and hide the older takes care of the younger 
one who dis one distracts the player by giving a wrong clue the person who is in the den can fix the limit to which he can children can wander this gives one opportunity for social interaction cooperation team efforts etc in play one cannot shout at team members for one's performance both the player and the members have to work out a strategy to cooperate as team spirit is more important one will cover the other for weakness it is a win win situation for both and a coping skill of life is learned here recapitulation theory believes that play prepares one to the role that one will take later in life play helps one to develop instinctual skills to be modified to erase primitive skill that is not accepted in a ball play it is primitive behavior for one to grab a ball to throw it into the basket but one has to follow certain rules before snatching the ball to shoot it into the basket modified behavior does not exhibit the instinct of snatching the ball recapitulating by practicing the accepted behavior or skill of snatching the ball recapitulating the steps that one used to open an automated toy will help him to understand the electrical wiring that is there in a circuit board each child passes through cultural stages that which are unique to his or her culture this is nostalgic whenever they recall we very often say the way we played hopscotch the way we climbed the tree to bring down the little kitten the games that we played on janmashtami etc growth theories proclaim that play is a generalized behavior for growth of an individual the moment the child is able to respond to external environment through sensory interpretation then begins the skill of mastering behavior that is required for survival in a particular environment the simple act of using a spoon aiming a target like a ball or a marble is required and similar activities that are required for successful life later a child is scared to slide down at first as she gains confidence she is able to do it independently this gives her confidence of mastering the environment to overcome fear of heights the pegboard play of a child will help him or her in finer motor coordination the ability to use a striker in a carom board is unique which can be transferred to using compass or instruments in a chemistry laboratory ego expanding theories claim that play helps in ego communicative exercise preparing one for later personality development play aids in personality development by virtually creating a stage for being a leader loser follower initiator problem solver the child learns to accept to play each of these roles successfully in enabling one widen out one's own modified ego we could pick up any one game and analyze for these above features let's take jungle gen the one who climbs high will be a leader will motivate one who cannot climb gives him or her the confidence to initiate to climb the one who attempts becomes a follower this situation can be observed in all play activities current theories of play in this infantile dynamics theory explains the cognitive space of a child is imperfect as she or he is in the process of forming an image based on experiences which are real or imaginary sometime a child from unrealistic world gains into the realistic world the child from playful experience realizes the realistic world during early childhood child believes that boogie man will come and carry him away this will change as the cognitive abilities improves this can be seen in the blindfolded play that children most often play cathartic theory says play is a way that a child resolves the conflicts when he or she do not have an alternative opportunity to let out to resolve conflicts it is seen they enjoy play like punching a bag using hands to knead clay or 
modeling an adult's role on a toy or a younger sibling, which they cannot do on an adult figure that inflicted pain on them. It could be anyone in his environment. Let, like imagining all cushions and pillows to be students and modeling as a teacher, using a stick to ask children to keep reading or to answer question asked. Psychoanalytic theory, according to this theory, a child masters a particular skill through repetition. A three-year-old may jump from a foot-high stool. As he or she jumps, feels that he has accomplished a great task that was challenging. This gives him confidence. Similarly, in an ability to climb jungle gym, that may cause anxiety, but with support and encouragement, one may master the same task which would give them confidence. The lesson of coping is learnt here. The ability to overcome anxiety causing factor. Play helps one to defend and cope with number of anxiety causing situations in life. Cognitive theory. The core of Piaget's theory is assimilation and accommodation. Play encourages an individual to integrate the experience into arriving at equilibrium. One integrates his new experiences into relatively limited number of motor and cognitive skills available at an age. During infancy, a baby puts everything into his mouth as the oral stimulus is comparatively high developed during this age based on one's experience of the child will assimilate the information. This is true for all ages. Child throws a ball in the beginning with great effort. He learns the skill of throwing the ball effectively with experience. In short, initial attempts are modified to skilled attempts. The above theories are a scientific interpretation of the play behavior that have been observed. This helps us in understanding the value of play. All the theories contribute in one or another way in understanding the play behavior. Brain function is aided by play. It helps in learning about the adult, the world around in a non-fearful way. Play facilitates children to express their creative ideas. Cognitive and emotional skills improve. While playing, children are encountered to make decisions, discover new interests and explore the world at one's own pace. Play activity helps children to improve child's mobility, balance, coordination, strength, good ability to process non-verbal stimuli. While at play, children have to be alert to respond to the opponent. At the right time, one has to make the right move. This would call for concentration. If it is an outdoor game, the player has to be on the move. If one does not, it is very costly experiment. Let's take an example of a play of skipping. If the player does not jump at the right time from the rope, he may hurt as he is not able to respond to the correct time. The body has to cooperate by being agile and skip. Let us imagine two of them playing the same game, where the two have to synchronize this same act perfectly to achieve mastery. Let us continue to look at the same play from cognitive dimension. One has to concentrate on the speed, movement of the body at the right time to get ready for the next act by synchronizing the movement. The longer one would keep skipping, the superior one would be in mastering the skill. Thus, it helps in improving cognitive abilities, verbal communication abilities to negotiate for the lapses till one is able to perfect. The emotional benefits of play are decision making, confidence building, problem solving. Let us now look at a group play where they are playing. Let's assume it is lion in the den. The team members have to be alert to not to let the person from outside the circle to come in. Make an appropriate move to cover the child outside. The child outside the circle has to solve the problem by judging the right point to move in. On the success of members, they develop confidence. Children improve based on their performance and mistakes are overcome in every attempt. Thus, the child learns by playing and experiencing.
Play is important to child's development. Lack of physical play can lead to long-term health and issues related to weight. The absence of free play can adversely influence mental health. In families where children are kept in strict schedule, fail to derive benefits of free play, which is very essential for development. Let's summarize the lesson on theories of play. Play is an innate gift that is given to mankind to understand the world around. Play is unique to each group. Play shows the zeal one has in life. Play was observed in many cultures in early civilizations. Play has cultural implications. Play is detrimental. For healthy growth and development of a child, the latest research claims that play is detrimental to brain development. The adult has to provide an appropriate situation and environment for the child to play. The theories help us in understanding play scientifically. The play behavior is universal irrespective of race, sex and culture. Play behavior could be interpreted with more than one theory to understand the benefits to growing community of children. It could be classical theory or current theory. It could be underst understood based on the surplus energy level or cognitive interpretation of behavior. Play has number of benefits to children. Irrespective of age, children need to be involved actively at play. Play encompasses more than one domain at a time. The domains of development cannot be separated based on play, it is integrated. Play has physical, social and cognitive benefits. Play enhances creative, cognitive, communicative and problem solving skills. The pressure of the modern world has hastened in the pace of child development. This has caused the impediment in growth and development of children. The modern urban cities have not planned for the needs of young children. The natural environment setting does not exist anymore to initiate children into play. Technology has also deprived children from active play. Policymakers, educationists, planners have all to work together to redefine play for children. In the next module, you will learn types of play. Thank you students for listening. I hope you have understood the basic theories of play.